You always make us late. You never do the dishes. You never get the car completely clean when you wash it. Hi, my name is John Comstock, and today we will examine criticism and its impact on us. The dictionary says criticism is the expression of disapproval of someone or something based on perceived faults or mistakes. In our digitally connected world, criticizing others can become a sport. Social media can become like the modern day Roman Colosseum. Throwing someone into the public eye, we can be tempted to entertain ourselves by watching someone be destroyed as the attacks and criticism tear apart their sense of worth as a person created in the image of God. Have you ever worked on a project only to have someone offer criticism about the project, pointing out ways it could be improved? If so, how did you feel? Was it constructive criticism? Did the criticism of the project make you feel defensive, hurt, misunderstood, or underappreciated? Or could you distinguish between the criticism about the thing and the person's feelings toward you? The answer to this question may depend on the tone, how the criticism was worded, and your level of trust in the person who offered the criticism. Have you ever been criticized in ways that use an explicit or implicit insult? If so, how did you feel? Again, I'll ask, did the criticism make you feel defensive, hurt, misunderstood, or underappreciated? Did their words make you feel insignificant and small? Here's a more challenging question. Have you ever criticized someone? If so, how did criticizing someone else make you feel? Did the criticism make you feel in control and powerful or superior? When we criticize another person, we chip away at trust, blocking opportunities for intimacy and vulnerability. Whether you receive criticisms or you struggle with patterns of criticizing others, here is one thing to remember. Criticism is a defense mechanism from a deep sense of inferiority. Patterns of fault finding will easily keep us from having to look in the mirror at our own shortcomings. The degree to which we despise our brokenness is the degree to which we will despise it when we see it in others. In many cases, we can easily identify the faults in others because those are the very faults we have not been able to own inside ourselves. So we project onto others our self-contempt. In 2 Corinthians 10.5, we are instructed to take every thought captive to obey Christ. Remember, the obedience is to Jesus. The Jesus who loved us when we had more than enough faults to be criticized. Yet Jesus didn't come into this world to criticize the world. Jesus came as the perfect revelation of the Father's heart, a heart full of affection and love for us, even when we were performing at our worst. Psalm 139, 23-24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. With that, here's today's challenge. The next time you're tempted to criticize someone, listen to your thoughts before they come out as words. Then be curious enough to ask, Jesus, is there anything about the other person's faults that remind me of my faults? And if I were known to have those faults, would I still be accepted and loved? Or, Jesus, will you help me experience the assurance of your affection for me as I feel so insecure right now? I pray that these questions will help you win today over criticizing others. 